Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I'm Marsha Gordon. I'm the president and CEO of the Business Council of Westchester. And it is an incredible honor for the Business Council of Westchester to be welcoming acting commissioner and president and CEO designate of Empire State Development, um, Hope, Hope Knight. We are just thrilled to welcome you, commissioner. Um, and we are also very, very pleased to, to be learning about Governor Hochul's budget. This is a great opportunity for the Westchester business community to have an understanding of the 2023 budget presented by Governor Kathy Hochul. The Business Council of Westchester has long enjoyed a wonderful relationship with the governor and with Empire State Development. I'm proud to serve as a member of the Regional Economic Development Council for the, for the Mid-Hudson. Recently was with the commissioner in Ossining when we, when, we, when, we, when we kicked off the Downtown Revitalization Initiative Project along with Havistraw. So welcome, commissioner. We also wanna take this opportunity to let members know that this is the first of several opportunities that we have to meet appointed and elected officials. On February 15th, we will be welcoming Lieutenant Governor Brian Benjamin. February 17th, we will have a broadband conference, a technology conference focusing on broadband and, and, and 5G. And then on March 1st, we will be welcoming the MTA president and chairman, Jano, Jano Lieber. Um, so thank you so much. I wanna recognize John Ravitz, who leads our legislative initiatives. There's John. Uh, for the um, for the Business Council of Westchester and George Lenz from Nicholas and Lenz, who is chairman of our of our Governmental Action Council, and of course the chairman of the board of the Business Council of Westchester, Dr. Heidi Davidson from Galvanize Worldwide. It's my pleasure now to formally introduce Hope Knight, who, as I said, was named the acting commissioner and president and CEO designate of Empire State Development by New York Governor Kathy Hochul in October, 2021. Prior to her appointment, Ms. Knight served as president and CEO of Greater Jamaica Development Corporation, one of the nation's first community development corporations. In that capacity, she advanced economic growth, community building and sustainable real estate development that has immeasurably revitalized and strengthened the Southeast Queens region. Additionally, from 2015 to 2021, she served as a commissioner on the New York State Planning, on the New York City Planning Commission, having been appointed by New York City Mayor Bill de Blasio. Prior to leading Greater Jamaica Development Corporation, she was Chief Operating Officer of the Upper Manhattan Empowerment Zone, overseeing over $150 million in investments, leveraging over $1 billion in private capital and working on projects such as the East River Plaza, which, which I love walking, the Tampkin East Harlem and the Victoria Theater and Hotel. She also served as vice president at Morgan Stanley at the, in, the, in the Institutional Equities Division, US, and as vice president of strategic planning and e-commerce for Morgan Stanley Japan. Earlier in her career, Ms. Knight worked at Accenture and in New York City government. She holds a BA from Marymount Manhattan College and an MBA from the Graduate School of Business of the University of Chicago. We welcome Mr. Hope Knight. We encourage if you have questions, please put them either in the chat box or in the Q&A box. And welcome to you, Commissioner. Thank you, Marcia. On behalf of Governor Kathy Hochul and her administration, it's a pleasure to be with you today. I want to thank you all for what you do to promote the economy in Westchester, across the region, and in New York State. Furthermore, I look forward to an opportunity, hopefully in the near future, when we can do these presentations live and I can be with you in person. I want to thank Marsha and John and everybody at the Business Council of Westchester for being here today. I also want to thank the elected officials that are here with us today, including the City of White Plains Mayor Tom Roach, City of Peekskill Mayor Vivian McKenzie, New Rochelle Mayor Noam Branson. I want to thank all of the business and nonprofit partners, as well as our partners in labor. 
I also want to acknowledge Governor Hochul's regional representative, Puvan Nidu, and ESD's regional director, Thomas Gaglione. They are key players in the top-notch team that Governor Hochul has assembled to move the state forward. As you know from uh, the Grace Shift's introduction that Marsha just provided, prior to my nomination by Governor Hochul, I worked in economic development and supported communities in need for more than two decades. My tenure at ESD comes at a critical time. The COVID-19 pandemic has had a devastating impact on New York. Under Governor Hochul's leadership, we will work together to support the economic recovery and build back ever stronger. Earlier this month, Governor Hochul delivered her first state of the state address and just recently unveiled her budget for the coming year. This um, budget and agenda is focused on economic recovery that, that lifts uh, the lives of all New Yorkers. And so let me begin with um, the first area of focus for the state of the state. So first area is rebuild our healthcare economy to provide care for more New Yorkers. Um, Governor Hochul is investing in New York's healthcare workforce to better serve more New Yorkers and lead the nation in equity across the healthcare spectrum. Prior to the pandemic, we knew that we already had a shortage of 39,000 RNs by 2030. And we will need to grow our healthcare workers by almost a third before 2028. We have a suite of solutions to retain and expand the workforce in the healthcare industry. So we want to rebuild and grow the healthcare workforce by 20% over the next five years. And that includes a $10, a $10 billion investment in healthcare and support for wages for workers. Uh, we want to expand workforce development partnerships to build a human services talent pipeline and grow and invest a uh, home and community-based healthcare home care workforce. We also want to uh, retain the existing healthcare workforce. Uh, we want to create more career flexibility for direct care workers. We want to reform rules limiting healthcare services, healthcare services that healthcare workers can provide. And we want to create a healthcare workforce innovation office. And then we want to expand healthcare's workforce reach through digital innovation. So we want to require that uh, private insurers reimburse appropriate telehealth services at the same level as traditional services. And we're going to create a center for Medicaid innovation to lower costs and improve care. We also want to close New York's coverage gap by making affordable coverage available to all. So we want to make health care affordable to more New Yorkers by expanding eligibility for the essential plan and create access for child health plus insurance, health services for children, for children by eliminating premiums for low income households. Uh, we want to ensure that mothers get the maternal healthcare services they need by expanding uh, prenatal and postnatal care and expand access to midwifery services through increased reimbursement rates. Uh, we wanna enable New Yorkers to age uh, with dignity and independence, first by establishing a state master plan for aging, uh, improving the quality of care in nursing homes and to strengthen long care ombudsman programs. And then finally, um, support more New Yorkers with stronger addiction, suicide, mental health, and domestic violence services. So we want to expand uh, mobile addiction treatment services, integrate mental health services into pediatric care, and create a New York State Gender-Based Violence Training Institute. The second area of focus is protect public safety, and take strong action against gun violence. So Governor Hochul is committed to investing in gun violence prevention efforts by strengthening proven law enforcement and community-based strategies. So gun violence has a high cost, uh, 
excuse me, $3.2 billion each year. Uh, we have this proliferation of ghost guns um, in, in 2021. Uh, that increase has been at 153%. And then we have um, a sharp increase in firearm homicides. Next slide. So we want to strengthen proven law enforcement strategies as well as uh, collaborate across uh, partners in our region. So triple resources for police uh, crime gun tracing efforts, form a gun tracing consortium, establish gun intelligence centers across the state to share meaningful data, and double state police partnerships with local law enforcement. We also want to deploy uh, violence interruption uh, strategies rooted in community. And so tripling the investment in community-based gun violence, uh, respond to regional needs in the aftermath of, a gun violent, of gun violence by funding innovative community empowerment strategies and provide additional law enforcement training on the state's red flag law to protect New Yorkers. Next slide. So we want to invest in New York's people. Uh, Governor Hochul is committed to accelerating the recovery for all New Yorkers, including supporting small businesses, overhauling workforce development efforts, and improving reentry into the workforce. So the uh, population during the pandemic has shrunk by approximately 319,000 people. Um, and the monthly unemployment rate in New York State is still high, 1.5 times the national average. So we want to provide meaningful tax relief for small businesses and middle class New Yorkers. So uh, there is the provision of a $100 million of relief for 195,000 small businesses. And then the acceleration of a $1.2 billion uh, middle class tax cut for six, bill, 6 million New Yorkers, and also delivering $1 billion in property tax rebate for more than 2 million New York families. Um, I want to give New Yorkers job skills access and protections. So overhauling the state's workforce development efforts to focus on region specific employment needs. And that includes creating an office of workforce and economic development at ESD and coordinating all workforce efforts statewide through the REDCs in partnership with DOL, SUNY, CUNY, and other state agencies. I want to make New York a model for the employment of workers with all abilities, including creating an office of the chief disability officer and protect workers' rights by including uh, and eliminating non-compete agreements for workers making below median wage. We want to support uh, the agricultural workforce and improve the food supply chain, uh, fund a Nurse New York initiative to feed New Yorkers and support farmers, establish a BIPOC farmer engagement and outreach program to encourage diversity, and fund urban farms and community garden grants program. We also want to launch a jobs to a jails to jobs program to improve reentry into the workforce and reduce recidivism by expanding vocational and job readiness and reentry programs, restoring the tuition assistance program for incarcerated individuals, allowing educational release as earned reentry opportunity, pass the Clean Slate Act to allow certain felony records to be sealed after seven years, pilot a new approach to transitional housing for post-incarceration individuals, eliminate outdated unfair fees for individuals returning to society after incarceration. We also want to protect New Yorkers uh, as consumers and improve financial health. So uh, stop transcript withholding from SUNY CUNY as a debt collection mechanism, strengthen the statewide Office of Financial Inclusion and Empowerment, and invest in effective student debt assistance programs. 
Section 4, Invest in New York's Communities. So we want to um, make strategic investments in infrastructure that generate dividends for the future. Um, comprehensive infrastructure projects and economic development programs will reconnect communities and promote multimodal connectivity, create world-class green spaces, and facilitate opportunities for economic growth. All of these efforts will be supported through an unprecedented investment in broadband to close the digital divide and connect more New York communities. So our um, highways are very highly traveled with 130 billion vehicle miles. We've had significant uh, decrease in DD GDP across all states. Um, and um, nearly 20% of New Yorkers don't have a broadband subscription and 30% live in areas with only one broadband provider. So we want to enact a new transportation plan that prioritizes critical projects throughout the state, introducing a new five-year capital plan for the New York State Department of Transportation that represents generational opportunity to enhance safety, improve reliability, and promote climate smart policies. Uh, so some of the transportation and infrastructure projects underway uh, revitalized the South Bronx by reconnecting the Bruckner Sheridan interchange at Hunts Point, reimagined the Van Wick Expressway into a gateway travel corridor, uh, accelerate the conversion of Route 17 into I-86 in Orange and Sullivan counties, renew and modernize our state's roads and bridges, elevate the Anthville Circle in Westchester County. We want to reconnect neighborhoods, particularly in communities of color, and so covering portions of the Cross Bronx Expressway to reconnect neighborhoods and increase open space and then invest in commercial quarters and waterfronts. So invest in the transformation of downtowns and waterfronts around the state, particularly in historically disadvantaged communities, uh, complete the Westchester River Walk, and reimagine New York State's statewide canal system. Um, Want to invest in health, clean tech research infrastructure, so create a world-class battery research and manufacturing center at Binghamton University, rebuild Wadsworth Center in Albany into a world-class campus, develop the IA industry through a Cold Spring Harbor laboratory and Stony Brook University partnership, expand transit networks and eliminate transit deserts in New York City, so create a commuter first Penn Station and revitalize the surrounding area, advance a transformational uh, project of the Interborough Express between Brooklyn and Queens, build phase two of the Second Avenue subway, open four new Metro North stations in the Bronx with Penn access and support congestion pricing in Manhattan. Uh, also bring affordable broadband uh, to New Yorkers and transform the state's digital infrastructure with over $1 billion in new investments. I want to promote economic development that strengthens leading industries and revitalizes communities. So we will launch a $1 billion plan to assist small businesses with new lending initiatives, tax relief for COVID impacted businesses, seed funding for emerging businesses and legalizing to-go drinks for restaurants. Um, we want to provide critical arts and cultural funding, uh, bring a new national semiconductor technology center and additional chip fabrication plants to New York, revitalize and spur economic growth across downtowns and expand the Restore New York Community Initiatives to rehabilitate or demolish abandoned properties. We want to build on New York's uh, leading uh, support for minority and women-owned businesses. Uh, we want to invest in faster MWBE certifications and address 
a uh, nagging backlog in uh, pending applications. Uh, we want to establish a MWBE appeals unit to address the backlogs in appeals. And we want to promote equal access to reduce rate loans for MWBE businesses. Section five, make New York's housing system more affordable, equitable, and stable. Governor Hochul has proposed a sweeping set of actions to make New York housing system more affordable, equitable, and stable. So more than half of New Yorkers that rent are considered rent burdened, and that means paying more than 30% of their income in rent. Um, we have some of the highest percentage of renters in the country, almost at 50%. And New York State needs 600,000 additional affordable rentals. So the governor wants to um, create and preserve 100,000 low income rental and cooperative housing units in both urban and rural communities over a five year time frame. Uh, promote housing affordability by expanding supply. So encourage the creation of safe accessory dwelling units, uh, spur transit oriented development, and end the 421A abatement and establish a new program that more effectively uses public dollars to drive affordability. Expand housing access and equity to keep more New Yorkers in homes. So improve housing access for renters with justice involvement or negative credit histories and create an eviction prevention legal assistance program to improve housing stability. Also want to, um, to take direct action to meet the homelessness crisis. So create and preserve 10,000 supportive housing units and establish safe option support teams to move people from street homelessness to shelter and housing. Section six is make New York a national leader in climate action and green jobs. So New York's uh, the nation leading, New York's nation leading uh, climate goals include 70% renewable electricity and 40% economy wide greenhouse gas reduction by 2030 zero emission electricity by 2040, net zero greenhouse gas emissions economy-wide by 2050. To implement a comprehensive vision for climate progress, Governor Hochul is proposing plans around renewable energy, green buildings, clean transportation, and environmental conservation. This will ensure that New York becomes a hub for green jobs and clean energy. So accelerate the renewable energy economy to protect climate health and create jobs. So invest uh, $500 million in offshore wind manufacturing and supply chain, uh, power one third of New York City with wind, solar and hydro, and you make New York State a green hydrogen hub. We want to decarbonize New York's buildings by achieving 2 million electrified or electrification ready homes by 2030. Bring green energy solutions to over 1,000 uh, public schools. We want to accelerate New York's adoption of electric and zero emissions vehicles. Invest $1 billion to support EV adoption and infrastructure. Achieve 100% electric school buses by 2035 and electrify the state fleet by 2035. We want to protect New York's environment and improve our community spaces by passing the $4 billion uh, clean water, clean air, green jobs, environmental bond act, expand community air monitoring statewide and safeguard the state's water resources. 
seven want to rebuild New York school system and reimagine higher education. The COVID-19 pandemic disrupted education across New York State and accelerated a vast teacher shortage. Enrollment in New York State K through 12 teacher education programs has decreased by more than 53% over the past decade. And one third of our public school teaching workforce is nearing retirement. The Hochul administration is proposing initiatives to address the teacher shortage and help students through the academic and social emotional challenges of the pandemic. We want to increase support for teachers and students, innovate SUNY and CUNY systems to address structural challenges and support regional workforce needs. So we want to increase support for educators and children, uh, provide incentives to attract more teachers and school workers, provide schools with billions of dollars by fully funding foundation aid, increase access to childcare for 100,000 families and invest $75 million in wages for childcare workers. Um, we wanna rebuild academic and school mental health supports worsened by the pandemic by providing uh, learning and mental health grants to high need districts and connect SUNY and CUNY Student Service Corps with community groups to meet local needs, uh, help two thirds of New Yorkers earn a post-secondary degree by 2030, expand tuition assistance program TAP to serve 75,000 additional students, provide tuition free uh, workforce credential programs at community college for high demand fields, provide childcare at all SUNY and CUNY campuses. We want to transform uh, CUNY into a uh, nation leading public higher education system, develop national, uh, global and regional research institutions, including Stony Brook and Buffalo as SUNY's flagship institutions, streamline the financial aid process and become a leader in adult learning opportunities. So we want to advance New York's place as a national equity model. New York State's uh, human rights law is one of the oldest and most expansive anti-discrimination -dis laws in the country. However, the pandemic has exposed continued disparities in our social and economic systems. Governor Hochul is committed to advancing wide-ranging plan to promote and support gender equity, racial equity, anti-hate, social justice, and LGBTQIA plus community immigrants and new arrivals and veterans with the goal of protecting the health, safety, economic opportunities and fundamental dignity of every New Yorker. So we wanna advance and promote anti-hate, racial equity and justice for all New Yorkers, bolster the nation's strongest anti-discrimination law establish a New York State hate and bias, protect, uh, bias prevention unit, expand benefits for victims of hate crimes by increasing the cap for replacement of essential personal property, we want to ensure gender equity and equal rights, create a council on gender equity, pass equal rights amendment this season, protect reproductive access for all, and protect New York's LGBTQIA plus community, both local veterans programs and strengthen immigrant services. Nine, make critical reforms to restore New Yorkers faith in their government. The Hulk administration is committed to restoring New Yorkers faith in their government. New transparency plans for more than 70 executive agencies and public authorities. 
proposed term limits and outside income ban for state elected officials, strengthening ethics requirements for local officials, and replacing the Joint Commission on Public Ethics, JCOP, with a more effective government watchdog. So those are the uh, state of the state proposals of the governor. And I'm happy to entertain uh, some questions. Okay, I think I'm, I think I'm coming back. Okay. There I am. That was so much packed in there, Commissioner. There's a lot, there's a lot on the table. Um, very, very, very visionary, um, terrific. We support, I just, I just want to highlight a few that are on the Business Council Westchester's agenda, and then we have some terrific questions and comments. So first of all, love, love the healthcare and workforce innovation. You might be interested to know that we have just launched a Westchester Innovation Network and we will be sharing a lot more about that in the, in, in, the, in the weeks to come, but we are basically matching businesses with innovators and testing out products and services from within Westchester, the Hudson Valley in the state, and even outside infusing innovation. So our businesses can, uh, can learn more. So we're really excited about that. Love your emphasis on small business, on workforce development. I know that um, Dr. Belinda Miles is on, uh, um, the, the, the president of Westchester Community College, and there's such awesome work happening there and, and initiatives with, with her leadership. Um, infrastructure, um, terrific. Um, the, the Business Council of Westchester under John Ravitz's leadership has been very, very engaged in infrastructure initiatives, as well as the Westchester Riverwalk. Yay, we love that. We partnered with Scenic Hudson to make that happen, and we're and, and we're and we're very very enthused. Transportation access to the west side is a very big deal for the county, and, and the whole region actually in terms of attracting attracting employees. We love the arts and culture. I um, I think Janet Langsam might um, might be on, but others that recognize that arts and culture is a big part of our economy. Faster MWBE certification. Big, big applause on that because honestly, that's been something that has been a frustration to many minority and women owned businesses. I'm sure. Can I speak to that for a second? Yes, so, please do. You know, when I got here, one of the things that I confronted was so not only sort of uh, a slower than I would like certification process, but we have an extensive backlog. And so Governor Hochul has um, allocated resources in her budget to sort of deal with both issues, uh, faster processing of mm -hmm. MWBE certification and addressing the backlog of those applications. That's that's terrific, much needed. And it will, it will open up many, many new opportunities for those businesses and for those for those businesses who really, really want to utilize that, uh, that network. Um, housing is definitely on the top of our agenda and many of our, many of our developers. Renewable energy has been something that the Business Council of Westchester, again, under John Rabbits' leadership, has talked about for years, especially with the closing of Indian Point. We are, we are concerned about the grid and the, and the amount of energy on the grid. And of, of course, of course, equity is top on our agenda, has been for almost two years now with our with our, with our anti anti bias center and workshops we've had. So um, I probably have not done as good of a job as my colleague John John would have done pointing pointing at everything. And I may I, I, I may pipe in, but we do have some questions and comments that I want to um, I want to, um, to, to, to to talk about to present to you. So if I can just get them, I've got a new machine here that I'm working with. So a little challenge here, but um, one of one of them definitely had to do with um, with uh, with renew with renewable energy. And um, hold on. 
Okay, how can we bring the breadth of activity in purchasing by offshore winds, wind suppliers and service um, and, ser and, and service providers? And how can we draw attention to the tremendous amounts of qualified qualified labor for uh, for offshore um, for for offshore wind in Westchester County, when the focus has only seemed to be on Brooklyn and Albany and Long Island and some and, and some others. And Commissioner, we don't expect you to have all the answers to all these questions. Certainly, I'm kind of letting you off the hook because some of these are comments, but they're all great and worthwhile to consider. Right. No. So what I'll say is, you know, I'll bring that back. You know, we work with uh, NIPA uh, in conjunction to um, really catalyze the offshore wind industry. As you know, was stated in this uh, presentation, there is five hundred million dollars committed to building the industry, particularly creating a support for supply chain businesses as well as the industry, and really want to um, use that funding to drive uh, employment opportunities yeah. to uh, support the industry. So we can have someone talk specifically about Westchester, but um, really putting significant dollars to invest in the industry. That's fan that, that's that's terrific. And the same uh, the same um, questioner wanted to wanted to point out that the workforce development model described should be leveraged to build the offshore wind uh, wind wind. Um, um, th th that is absolutely what we um, intend to do. I just talk a little bit about the Workforce Development Office that will be consolidated here at ESD. Really is about um, responding to um, job creation opportunities that are um, done by investments that we make in businesses and industries so that um, the training is demand driven by employers. And so we can, you know, reduce this mismatch of jobs available and workers not because they don't have the training to access the employment opportunities. We really want to reduce that gap. Thank you. Uh, now, this question has to do with healthcare, and it's a question and also an idea. The challenge of doing more with, with less is a healthcare hallmark, but tough to implement in nursing homes. How might there be a program of tuition subsidies for doctors, nurses, and others if new grads had mandatory service requirements for nursing homes and the underserved? Good, that's, it's a, it's that's a, good, a good, good consideration. Absolutely, good suggestion, I'll bring that back. Okay, um, hold on, it's moving, moving down here. Okay, um, new, new Yorkers who are blind and disproportionately poor, BIPOC and not connected to the, to, to the internet, not only need subsidized broadband, but subsidized technology and training. This is especially a problem for older blind um, New Yorkers. Will the governor consider increasing state funding for the New York State Commission for the Blind to address the needs of older blind New Yorkers? Well, I can't answer that directly, but I will certainly bring that back. Thank you. And I believe that is from our friends at Vision. So they are certainly here if um, if you need more, if you need more, more information. Mm -hmm. um, this is about small business. And I know that's a big passion of yours. How does the state define a small business? What is, is it defined by number of employees, annual income? Additionally, how is New York State planning to assist small and mid-sized business in obtaining affordable health care for their employees? This, this, this is a small business whose employees are paying um, at least um, 15,000 each annually for an affordable bronze plan on the, on the, uh, on the exchange, I'm assuming. So, um and so yeah, with also, this, and that's with that's with a seven thousand dollar deductible. Um, I'll start with small business and then go to um, healthcare. Uh, so small business is defined um, in various ways across our various programs. So in some cases, a small business is less than a hundred employees. In other cases, it's less than five hundred. Sort of depends on the program that. Um, you're trying to access. But in general, we think about um, small businesses 
less than 500 employees. Um, and then with respect to um, healthcare costs, we, we know that they are rising rapidly. And I know the governor has um, plans to look at how to reduce costs of insurance broadly so that uh, businesses can access the product um, at lower rates. And, and that's something that is ongoing. Great, thank you. Um, the, this is another question about the New York Health Act. He's getting a lot of advocacy in uh, this, this uh, questioner's local community. Is this something the governor supports and, if, and, and, and it doesn't appear to be part of this year's budget proposals? I have to say, I don't know what the New York Health Act is. Okay, okay. So if the questioner wants, come back. Yeah. wants to come back, that's yep. fine. Um, I am not seeing any other questions in the chat. Amanda, are there any that I am missing? I think I think we are. I think we are. We are. We up. Oh, hold on a minute. Okay, we are good. We are good. Um, Commissioner, you you have supplied us with a very very comprehensive, a comprehensive um, overview of the state budget. More than an overview. Um, I know there's more available online. We can be the conduit to you and to the governor's office if there are other questions. So please, please let us know if there's something you, you want us to ask or, or research. Your team at Empire State Development, Tom Scaglioni, James Kozenblad, and the, Eric Warren, who serves Westchester and the entire team are so responsive to us all of the time. We, we, we very, very much appreciate that. And we appreciate your leadership and certainly Governor Kathy Hochul's leadership and everyone who's been on this morning to, um, to, to learn more because this affects all of us. It affects our business community and our, and, and, and our, and our community at large. So thank you. Thank you, everybody. Um, we appreciate you being here. Stay healthy and please join us on our upcoming events, February 15th when we will be introducing the Lieutenant Governor, Brian Benjamin, February 17th for our broadband 5G conference and March 1st for MTA President Chairman Jana Lieber. Have a, have a great day. Thank you, take care. Thank you.